Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Thank you for tuning in for a new episode of We Talk Back, a show dedicated to you niggas and these hoes. It's your co-host, AJ Holiday. What's up, team? Hey, y'all. Hey, AJ. Were you drinking, bitch? If this is not lean. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not. It's I'm missing some cough syrup. <laughs> I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. How was your weekend? I didn't do much. Shit. Same shit. What'd you do? I did do a, a, I guess, a little bit of Valentine dinner on Sunday. A little before. bit of dinner. Yeah, because we in Atlanta, right? Uh-huh. So Valentine's is today. We're recording, y'all. Um, is so it? I, yeah. So Ooh. I did do dinner on Sunday. What did you do? I didn't do shit. Dinner and dick. You got dick? <laughs> yes. I be getting dick, bitch. I don't know about you. I didn't get no dick, and I didn't get no dinner, actually. I kind of drove here. And I was running around trying to find something to wear because we're filming, you guys. So I didn't do Oh, I hung out with Takia. So we went to Esco. Uh, that's a little cool little spot. And we had Two Chains was there. His wife was there. They were kicking it. It was r and B. I I love them. I love Two Chains. He's such a man. Yeah. So it was a cool time. And yeah, that was it. So we could be here bright and early. I didn't do too much. You got a dick last night? No, Sunday. It's Monday, ain't it? Today is Tuesday. Shame. It's Valentine's Day. Okay, I ain't so know. Monday we could at least wore pink, bitch. We sad on Valentine's Day. I wore black Day. on purpose because <laughs> I ain't got no Valentine. <laughs> What's your best and worst Valentines? I have really not had any bad ones. I I, I don't know if you want to consider the ones you got to be by yourself kind of bad, but no, I had a bad one. Hmm. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. I'm gonna start with the bad one, then I'm in with the best one. All right, we family. <laughs> And I'm sharing with y'all. <laughs> so it was this guy I was seeing. We had only been seeing each other like maybe a couple months or whatever. And um, we talked about Valentine's and he was like, I don't believe in Valentine's. Oh, here we go. And I was like, well, I do. So if I don't spend it with you, I'll probably be with somebody, right? Mm-hmm. So like the day before Valentine's, he was like, uh, what you doing tomorrow? I was like, I don't have plans yet. He was like, I want to see you. I want to... Once you come over, I'm going to make you dinner. I'm going to do some nice things. All right. I was like, okay, cool. I was all the way in Columbia, South Carolina. And I drove back to Charlotte to have this Valentine experience, even though I still had to work the next day in Columbia. So I was doing a lot of back and forth to right. make this experience happen for me. Let's just get that together. All right. So I get to his house and he got Brian McKnight playing and shit. And he got like a bunk. What's that? Nothing bunk cakes. I love he got like one of those cake. and he got some flowers and he's in there making steak and all like, you know, so it's all good. Like everything is good. I'm like, oh, this is nice. He poured me a glass of wine. We're having good conversation. All right. So I had lied to him about my age, but I've been trans age for a long time. Right. <laughs> Wait a so, minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we were having a conversation. I had forgot. Like I told him when we first met and we were having a conversation. He was like, did you ever lie to me about anything? And I was like, I don't think I've ever lied to you about anything. And I was like, oh, I might have told you I was two years younger than I really am. All right, hold. Let me go back. <laughs> this is this is after we done ate the steak and I done gave him some head. We done did it and all this shit. Now he was like, did you ever lie to me about anything? I Why was the like, fuck you, people want to have serious conversations after so sex like, like that? Now? You're killing the moment. I don't moment. think I ever lied to you. I was like, I think when we met, I might have told you I was... Such and such age, but I'm I'm really this age, but it's like a year and a half older, two years older than what I am. He was like, oh, you lied to me. I can't believe you need to leave. <laughs> what? I need to leave? It's pouring down rain, y'all. It's fucking pouring down rain. This nigga made me leave his house. He was, all right, so earlier, I felt like he was trying to find a reason to go because he was like, I need to go get my homeboy. He need a ride real quick. He was trying to go to another bitch house. Like it was very evident that he had planned two Valentines for two different people. And when I I like stopped like, oh, you're not going to get nobody. Send him an Uber. If he need to go, if he need a ride, send him an Uber. I was shutting everything down. So he had to try to find a way to pick a fight. And he was like, did you ever lie about anything? He was just waiting on me to have something I lied about so he could be so appalled. (laughs) And put me out his fucking house in the rain. And I drove home in the rain like. (laughs) 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 Bitch can't even breathe. I can't breathe. I wanted to kill that nigga. I wanted to kill him. That was my worst Valentine's Day. By far. That's sad. Yeah, ain't that sad? I wonder if he Googled like how to get rid of a bitch on Valentine's Day. (laughs) (laughs) How did he he 
even fight. come up with that. He just was coming. He's, he's trying a professional. to come up. Yeah. He a fucking professional. Still to this day, he tried to like, give me a no chance. No, nigga, you put me out on Valentine's Day. In the rain. In the rain. Over a little white lie that I told you the first day we met. A little white. That was a white lie, right? Very traceable. Yeah, it's not that deep. <laughs> like, and you made it a big deal. Ugh. So fuck that nigga. And then my best Valentine. My best Valentine, my ex-boyfriend, one he um took a took me on the helicopter ride over the ocean like a sunset, champagne mm-hmm. helicopter ride. Then we went, um, then we went to paint. Um, like, you know how like a paint and sip, we went and did that. And then the next day, oh, we stayed in the hotel room that night and he had me pack for five days. He said, just pack. And he, I was living I in- I never had no shit like that. I gotta I was, get my Valentine's up. <laughs> I was living in Europe at the time. We were both, both were living in Europe. So he flew me home, I was so homesick. And he flew me home to see my mama like mm. the next day. So, oh, and we also went and saw Lion King, the Broadway show. Like he did it, he pulled out all the stops. I fucked him on the plane. It was like a red eye. <laughs> it was a red eye back from uh, like from England and London to New York, and it was like empty. And I fucked him right on that plane. I did, cause that was the dopest Valentine's. Cause I was so that's guaranteed sick. pussy. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was my best Valentine. That's nice. What about you? Just basic shit, dinner, dick. You know, same thing you did yeah. Sunday. Yes. <laughs> Bitch, nigga ain't never flew me on a goddamn helicopter over the ocean. Never happened. It was Look, never... it's on my bucket list, though. I'm going to add it on there. Yeah, That's that was... the type of Valentine's I need next year. Yeah. So hopefully I'll have a whole boyfriend or husband if we don't, by next let's Valentine's. Just, we can just rip. We can pay for it. A helicopter Period. and get on there and drink. We might get to that shit today. Shit. In between time. Yeah, in the meantime. Saying. Right. We don't have to wait till Valentine's. We can go down to Miami. They got helicopters. We can ride over the ocean. I ain't sucking you. I ain't fucking you on the flight though. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's still early. It's Valentine's. You never know what might happen with right. night. And you know, I my suggestion for any man in a relationship today, stop acting like Valentine's Day does not matter. It matters to women. It also matters to men too. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Imagine you liking a woman and they just ghost your ass on today. Right. That's it's going to be a problem. And st- women, stop thinking fucking and sucking dick is a Valentine's Day gift. Yeah, get that man something. Not. Get him trinket. something. You something. know, a real gold diggers trick first anyway. Right. Get him a small little trinket. <laughs> something. Some <laughs> socks, some drawers, like anything he said right. that he liked, a little video game right. that he wanted or some shit. Depending. And then pussy. Right. And then <laughs> pussy. The same old pussy you've been bringing every day. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, it is, you know, like, it's not a gift. Oh, did you see that post that somebody put? It was like, uh, um, I'm sorry to break the news to y'all, but all pussy feel the same. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's so, not true. I don't somebody misspelled that. booty hole. Because <laughs> <laughs> first of all, it's different. Yeah, absolutely. This shit right that doesn't different. make sense that all coochie could ever feel the same. Because some are tighter, some are older, some are newer, some are, you know? Right. Some dry. Right. Drier, wetter. Like, there's no way they Just shape different same. on the inside. hmm That sounds like somebody who ain't had a lot of pussy. Or none at all. Yeah. That sounds like, yes. In sale. It's giving in sale. I just saw a little inch finger. Yeah. It yeah, sounds like somebody who, yeah, oh, can't feel the Oh, you got like a micro pussy. penis, then all of them not probably the, feel the same. Not even a micro, but if you only can get to the front of the vagina, that's probably, it Why feels the all, same. Yeah, because it's just the top of the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got a top of the hole. <laughs> You're an ignorant, man. Oh. Okay, well, that's Valentine's Day, guys. That's all we got. We ain't got no love advice. I mean, we're happy if you're in love. It's a special Strap day. Strap up. Or not. Make a baby. Strap up. Girl, we about oh, to be in a goddamn... A we about to have a war, maybe a apocalyptic type shit about to happen. Do not get pregnant today. Why not? We need kids to keep the earth nah, going. Nah, nah. Wait till next year. Uh, wait till after 2025. Uh, this is my first time that I would advise you to have sex raw. That's usually what Whatever, you say. Whatever, bitch. Listen, let me tell you. It's that's unusual hard for you to say. with a gun and a book bag and a baby. Like. <laughs> 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 Don't worry. We're, we're going to be fine, okay? There's not going to be any apocalypse. All right. We're talking about val- Valentine's. This bitch talking about apocalypse. Yeah, because y'all people need to remember that real shit's still going on. Yeah. Don't ever get comfortable. Okay, but still today, can we just, can it be about love today just for one day? 
yeah, I love today. <laughs> that's why I love tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's all we got on Valentine's Day. Thank y'all. We'll be right back. All right. So let's get into stupid internet news. Yeah. So what we got going on? Let's so see. this past weekend was the Super Bowl. Yes. Oh, Super Bowl Sunday. That's what I did Sunday. Yes. I stupid. forgot about that shit. So the Eagles and the whatever the Chiefs, fuck the team who won. They opened up for They opened Rihanna. up for Rihanna. Mm-hmm. And from what I understand, because I wasn't paying attention, it looked like it was a good game. <laughs> Up it was not end. a good game. The Eagles threw the game, as far as I'm concerned. Them niggas was dropping the ball, all type of there dumb was shit. There a lot of pressure I on those I bet somebody guys. $100 on that game. I don't know who. I forgot. You bet so. against the Eagles? You no. You bet for I, the Eagles? Yeah, I bet for the Eagles. Oh, damn. I just knew they was going to You paid? Win. No. You going to pay? If the person say, bitch, you bet me, yeah, I'll pay them their money. Other than that, no. I'm not paying their ass. Yeah. Let me tell you why I thought the Eagles was going to win. So my ex-boyfriend is getting out of prison mm -hmm. in like a week or two. Okay. Who's been in prison for nine years. Damn. And Welcome he got home, Eagles tatted on his, uh, that's his favorite team. So I just knew they was going to win. Because the nigga coming home from jail? <laughs> <laughs> That's not good enough. <laughs> it would have been good to boost his morale yeah. coming back into, yeah. you know, into the real world. Well, how you feel about Rihanna? I love Rihanna. As soon as she hit the fucking stage, I said, that bitch pregnant again. Yeah, me too. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy for her. And she showed up like, whatever, doing her little two-step, barely dancing. Like, y'all niggas, this is all y'all gonna, gonna get. get. <laughs> and be happy. I feel like Aesop was dancing harder on the ground than Rihanna was. He was sharing but his But she woman was up on. in the air on a platform floating and shit. I, I didn't was see scared. no harnesses or nothing on her. I was scared as hell of her. Like, bitch, what? Beyonce does that at concerts Why all the time. Why she didn't bring nobody out, though? I feel like if you can't dance, maybe you should bring out somebody that can dance. But she's enough. What is she? Rihanna is enough. Mm, I, I mean, I love, don't get me wrong. Rihanna is the baddest a bitch in this What is a Rihanna Navy or whatever? I don't know if I'm in the Navy, but I'm I'm a big fan. But I just don't feel like she gave what needed to be given She's for pregnant. Super Bowl. She showed up oh, pregnant. Funny. Like all, you know, Cardi B kind of started that whole thing. Like, stop putting your life on hold. Do the shit. Have mm -hmm. your babies. You can still do but this. But Cardi B was humping the ground pregnant and all kind of shit. <laughs> she was doing it. Rihanna has a little more class. Is that what that. it is? Because yes. I've seen Rihanna titties a couple times on like different outfits and stuff like that. So... Is, don't is do it a, a is it matter of class? Don't do I don't think it was it's class. class. Don't do a Riri. I, I, like I loved Cardi. her performance. I loved the little baby bump. I loved the baby bump. Uh, well, the um, performance was. I love the songs. It was nice to hear the songs again. Bitch, better have my money. That was where we can go with that, and we're gonna leave that right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So y'all know for Black History Month, we try to do like you know a baddie who talks back. Um, and speaking of the Super Bowl, did y'all see Cheryl Lee Ralph? Yes. Okay. She was so fine. Looks so good. Oh, she looked. Black people are fucking beautiful. Aren't we? That's what I do know. She looks so good. And she sounded good, too. Yes. And I knew she was talented, but I didn't know she could also sing. I didn't know she could sing either. I always known her, you know, as an actress. Actress, right. But I guess that's about right. Mm -hmm. Because she played... In Dreamgirls. So just to give a little background on Shirley Ralph, she was born in 1956, December 30th. She's an actress and singer. Now that I know she's a singer too. Mm -hmm. um, she made her screen debut in the 1977 comedy film, A Piece of Action, before landing the role as Dina Jones in the Broadway musical Dreamgirls. That was in 1981, um, for which she received a Tony Award for. Mm -hmm. Damn, I didn't know she had a Tony. Mm -hmm. um, so she received the Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical nomination. Um, she currently stars as Barbara Howard on the AM ABC mockumentary sitcom Abbott Elementary. I love that show. Do you watch it? No. No, I'll be watching TV for it's real. It's good. It's funny. <laughs> I'm going to have to catch up on it. Yeah. Um, for which she won Outstanding Supporting Actress in Comedy Series at the 74th Prime Time. Emmy Awards. Okay, so this week's Batty Who Talks Back goes to Cheryl Lee Ralph because she was cutting up at the Super Bowl this Sunday. And she's so talented. So we salute you, girl. And she looks so good. Yeah. All right, so you got this pastor mm -hmm. talking crazy about Beyonce not wanting her congregation to attend any um, 
Beyonce, Beyonce concerts. concerts. So Tiffany Montgomery says she got saved in 2015 because she used to go to Beyonce and Jay-Z concerts back before she got saved. Now she's a pastor and she wants to influence everyone to not uh, endorse Beyonce or Jay-Z. And she says that they witches or something like that, right? Yeah, that's what she said. And I kind of, uh, a little bit, there's nothing wrong with being a witch, first of all. Y'all know I'm a self-proclaimed one. <laughs> when you say that, what does that mean? I use the Earth's elements to bend shit to my will. I don't fuck with people, though. I think when people try to get into witchcraft, the first thing women want to do is put a spell on a nigga to make him like them. Yeah, remember the time bullshit. I called you and asked you to, like, give me a spell? You don't want that because you're going to be trying to, you're going to have to file a restraining order give it to on me. a nigga. Yes. I, I appreciate that you didn't do that because. You can't take away people's free will. So that's the one thing I may not agree with, with, you know, using witchcraft for shit, but. I do believe that they own some shit, the Knowles family, right? But you for the church us, to be our, talking shit. This is our, one of our first <laughs> filming. This bitch gonna get us canceled early. <laughs> Why? I'm with it. I'm dad just don't fuck with people, right? But I don't think the church has any room to talk. Like y'all literally be in there drinking and eating the blood of Christ on Sundays. That sounds like witchcraft to first me. First Sunday. Whatever. That sounds like a ritual to me. Mm -hmm. To me, as somebody who practices, that sounds like a ritual. Okay. So you feel like, the, I'm confused. The church too. should not be talking about Beyonce. That's what I feel like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I don't think it was the church. It was just that one lady. I, I haven't seen a lot of- Well, this lady's church. Yeah. I think um, Michelle came to her defense, you know, saying, because Michelle is like a, a very Christian woman, and she definitely came to her defense. She clapped back saying- Bitch, don't make me run up on you. <laughs> Wait, who was that that's yelling the, like that's that? The, that's the that pastor. was Michelle? No, that's the pastor. <laughs> anyway, I like Beyonce. I like Beyonce. I don't know about Jay-Z, but I do like Beyonce. I feel like, um, I don't know, maybe she's uh, being held under her uh, under duress. I don't know. Now, I will say that these concert tickets is out of control. I won't, I'm not going to go. I didn't go look, did you? I'm not going to go because I can't afford them tickets. Not because this pastor told me not to go. I haven't looked. How much, how much is the cheapest floor ticket? Floor seats. Somebody was like, oh, I got two floor tickets if you want them. They was 3000 a piece. Damn. I looked online, like the nosebleeds was like $500. So now when I did go to um, Tina Knowles' um, nonprofit in LA last year, they were auctioning off tickets for Beyonce concert. Mm. And uh, how much they go for? Fifty thousand dollars. Two bitches bought those tickets. Beyonce Kendra G was one of them. Oh, she got. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She bought those tickets. Uh, uh get somebody else to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got that kind of money to invest in a concert. Nope. It just doesn't seem right. Three thousand dollars to sit on the floor. Yeah, that's I went wild. to see Beyonce. We know her target Robin. market. It was like two thousand eighteen <laughs> or something like that. I paid three hundred dollars for floor ticket. I saw Beyonce in two thousand eight. My ticket was like one fifty. But here's the thing: <laughs> they're doing something with these tickets, like Ticketmaster, and there has there should be some kind of law mm -hmm. about raising the prices on these tickets. Because I don't even think it's really Beyonce tickets that is that much. I think it's the resellers. Yeah, that people are... bought them when they hit the market, right? Just like the sneakers, right? And then they, you know, yeah, they resell just, them. For I feel more. like in other countries they have laws against that happening. But here in the States, anything we just goes. getting fucked over every chance they get. That's all we have? No, the lightning. Oh, okay. So, all right, so look, moving right along. Um, so earlier this week, a flash storm struck the big ass Christ mm -hmm. that they have in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Mm -hmm. And now the internet is in a frenzy. I know uh, Will Smith posted it. But this is not an uncommon event mm -hmm. for like, it's a big ass statue. It On goes, a mountain. Yes, so real high in the sky. Would hit it. 98 feet tall. Yeah. So why would it not get struck by lightning? But all right, so that <laughs> shit got struck by lightning and we've been shooting unidentified flying objects out of the sky mm -hmm. all over the United States and Canada. Oh, There's and- There's some shit going on The right Georgia now. Guidestones, I don't know if anybody, you ever heard of Georgia Guidestones? Mm -mm. So last summer, that shit got struck by lightning. Well. You can't tell what struck it on video. Mm -hmm. You see, a, they have a video where a car is speeding away from it. 
it looked like lightning strikes to me. And this is a three uh, stone hinges. And on the stone hinges, it tells you how to maintain humanity. And this was sitting in the middle of a small town in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And that shit got blown up last summer. Hmm. And now you got the UFO. aliens flying around, right? So she getting different 2023, but I won't be surprised by nothing. Bitch, I, let me tell you, I packed all my bullets in my car, both my pistols, <laughs> just in case. Just in, in case, case you got to shoot some aliens. If it turned into like The Walking Dead, because you know in The Walking Dead, that shit started in Atlanta well, at the CDC. Yeah, oh, it did start in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Bitch, you won't get me stuck. I'm a survivor. I don't feel like you can shoot them, <laughs> like, with your regular bullet. What, the aliens or the... Um, the aliens, oh. they probably got some type of suit. I they know. Like it, they, I'm do sure it. they have done their research on us down here, and they know that we like to shoot each other up and shit like that. So they done, <laughs> they prepared. Yeah, y'all keep on playing out here if y'all want to. I don't know, man. One thing I know, I'm gonna live to tell a story. That's all the fuck I know. Oh, I know that's right, girl. All right, y'all. We gonna take a break right quick, and when we come back, we want to get into. Some fun stuff, lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk Sitcom sitcoms life. and love. We'll be right back. Okay, so guys, we're back. And I wanted to talk with AJ about black sitcoms and black sitcom love. Not just sitcoms, movies too. So we made a list of all our favorite black couples. And we just wanna talk about a few things that we love about them and that we hate about them and those things like that. So I made, I compiled a list of questions to ask AJ and we can talk about it and then y'all can talk about it at home too. Okay, so first, which couple was the best parents out of all your black couple sitcoms and movies? Who do you feel like was the best parents? Okay, I think it would be a tie between Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv mm -hmm. and um, the Huxtables, Absolutely. of course. That okay. would be mine. The Huxtables. I feel like every episode came with a life lesson, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, there was a lot of people, parents, that didn't have parents. It's Uncle Phil, too. J. Cole definitely said Uncle Phil. Oh, yeah, Uncle Phil. Yeah. But Uncle Phil, like, the way that, you know, that was a little bit unrealistic for most black people, I guess. Why? The household. Oh, oh because it was rich? Yes. Yeah. But they definitely, you know, had a lot of shit you can learn from in Especially the TV shows. Especially the episode when Will was like... <laughs> Oh, my daddy don't love me. That was that was my that's, favorite episode. That's sad, that man. Yeah, that was sad, but it was a lot of black kids that could relate to that mm -hmm. shit, right? But we ain't gonna never see them cry about it. They just keep blaming their mama about it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's mama fault, though. No, bitch, it's never mama fault. She did her best. You right, know you can't hold black women she, accountable for shit. She, <laughs> the fuck she is picked that, that nigga. Fault. All right. <laughs> Which couple would you want to be like? Uh, mm. know, which couple? Uh, I like, I'm looking personally, at it. Like, so I we like, were on the list. I like Martin couples. and Gina relationship. Martin like, and fun. Gina, they could trip out together. But they didn't seem like they was doing no whole lot of good fucking. Like they just was funny together, but they wasn't like. <laughs> Remember, she had her head stuck in the fucking bed. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's some fucking. All right, I would say. <laughs> Mm, I don't know. Who would I want to be like? Bitch, you Georgia Wheezy, uh, Miss Lorraine. No, because <laughs> no, uh, George Jefferson was toxic as fuck. That's, that's who I'm pulling for toxic. But I would say I probably wouldn't want to be like Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, rich and, and healed and happy. No? I guess. Which one? Which, which Aunt Viv? Viv black, the first one? Or? Black Aunt Viv. <laughs> Both of them black. Dark skin, not Viv. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I could not be on um, Viv because I'm not marrying a nigga that big. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you had a rich man who loved you to death and do anything for no. you, treat you good, you would marry him because you would have to take care of that nigga. Feed him around. some of them little rice cakes you be carrying around. About, you care. I, <laughs> about 60, 70 years old, you're going to be having to take care of him. Cause he did not make you healthy life get, decisions. You it's can her make fault that nigga was that big in the first place. still not be healthy at, by the time you're 60, 70 years old. Right? But the chances of you being unhealthy and needing someone to take care of you because now you have done what the fuck you wanted to do your whole life, right? Mm -hmm. Made all these unhealthy decisions. Mm -hmm. Now I got to pay for him. I see that in real life. So That's who why. you pick? If you don't want no fat nigga, who you pick? <laughs> 
I didn't say I want to. Okay, I don't want an unhealthy nigga. I'll say that. Let me okay. not. Um, body shame, Uncle Phil. I'm not body shaming him. <laughs> you did. Plus size man. <laughs> <laughs> No, I still want to go with Martin and Gina. Okay, so that would be yeah. your go-to couple. They was cool, but I wouldn't. I don't think I would have chosen. Okay, which couple was the funniest? Definitely Martin and Gina. Sometimes Gina got funnier. Like maybe I don't know. Maybe it a, was Martin that made it funny. You know, right. she was just like the Martin and goddamn Pam were funny. Yeah, but they weren't a couple. They you can't. They them. probably wanted to fuck in real life. They might have did in real life. They would have done fucked. Right? Yeah. Martin would have smashed Pam. In real life. Because that was some like on the playground hitting a girl because you like them. Their chemistry. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. I could see that, but they don't count because they're not a couple. So who you pick? Um, I picked them as the funniest. The funniest Martin together? Gina, yeah. Yeah. All right. I agree. Which couple would do the best fucking? Like we didn't watch all these couples fuck, but in your imagination... Who was fucking the best? Mm. Why are you thinking I'm gonna give you mine? I really think Florida Evans and James Evans was doing the best yes. fucking. Nice, greasy fucking. L poor fucking. Sweating. Poor in the <laughs> No AC. All we got is love fucking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree. Damn this shit in the way. Yeah. <laughs> damn, yeah. damn, damn. James, that wasn't just about him being gone. She was gonna miss that dick. <laughs> I agree. They probably had the best sex life, and they seemed the happiest a lot of times. You know no, what I'm saying? No, they seemed the most miserable all the time. You think so? It was I always think, well, scratching maybe and by surviving. the end. <laughs> <laughs> For real, like every episode was like hardship, but they had a lot of love. They there you go. So maybe I'm confusing, conflating happiness with love. But is yeah. that not the same thing? Not oftentimes. Mm. You can have a lot of love and not be like happy with your situation. Right? Yeah, but love makes the situation easier. No? I'm sure it would, but I don't think they was completely happy. Mm. I know they wasn't happy with them fucking kids, but together, them as a couple minus the kids, I feel like they were happy with each no, other. No, because they had financial struggles that they were always arguing about. You don't think so? I got to rewatch, but you watch way more TV than me. Yeah, I do. I love me a good black sitcom. Okay. Which couple was the most toxic? Mm. I so, don't know. Who you got? I would say, first of all, I would say um, the most toxic was um, Sherman Bobby Hensley. <laughs> What's his name on the show? Uh, from... Not good times, but the Jeffersons, Sherman Hensley, George. Oh, George, George and Wheezy. George was toxic as fuck. That nigga was a narc. He was he sure. was a uh male chauvinist. Male chauvinist pig is what he was. And like that show would never like fly in today's like Hell society. No. He couldn't be like that and be okay. They were like, why is this nigga always talking shit to Wheezy like that? And how he did, what was the um the maid name? Girl, I don't know. What was the maid name? Y'all know? Anybody? Florence. Florence. <laughs> How he used to talk to Florence? He was real disrespectful to Florence. But then she was in there not doing shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, and Issa Rae and Lawrence, like, I only caught, like, a few episodes of that. That would be a more modern day... Well, I don't feel like I'm they confused. were toxic towards each other. It would be a more modern day, like, They just were having, like... Forth. No commitment. Oh, yeah, you're right. Trying He's to figure fuck. out, are we the, together? Uh, are we not together? Like, that's what we deal with now. Yeah, like, that right. little gray area when you start fucking with somebody and they still fucking with somebody. And, like... Listen, Monica Ooh, and Quincy. Bitch. Yes. Monica and Quincy. They Them were babies. toxic. Like, you think about it. <laughs> that movie was supposed to be such a, like, sweet, loving story. It's really not. He did Monica so fucking dirty. Like, he dumped Monica because... She couldn't play basketball. No, <laughs> she couldn't play basketball because because she wouldn't be there for him right when he needed him to talk to her. Like she had a fucking game. She had a curfew. Like why? And he dumped her because of that shit. And then got with fucking Tyra Banks ass. And then she imagine being playing a nigga for his heart in the middle of the night <laughs> in the driveway. And he playing hard too. That <laughs> nigga trying to beat your ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> Imagine knocking on a nigga window in the middle of the night. I would just start fighting. Play me for your personally. heart. The fuck. <laughs> and then he really came out there and played her. Like that was definitely very toxic. Uh, I wouldn't call it toxic. Who else? Melanie and Derwin. That shit was dumb. Where, toxic. What show was that, that on? It was like what show was or what movie is that on? Mount, that's um the game. Oh, I definitely didn't watch that time. Really? No. I oh, caught, that's so good. So you should I go back knowing, and see it. I know some. Okay, so I know like um, the storylines on a lot of shows, but like to say I watched some shit from top to bottom, no. Med school? No. No. Of that. Girl, you need to go back and see that. It's really good. Okay. So now what the, happened? My uh, they were they were definitely toxic. Derwin had an outside baby. Well, I mean, I guess they were kind of split when she had the baby, but. Uh, she was like but still swabbing fucking. the baby to see if the baby was his. Like it was that's not about like, right. Trying to get pregnant with turkey basters and all kind of crazy. Because he was a football over. player, right? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I remember. He played for the. Uh, I don't know who the fuck he played for, but that was real <laughs> toxic. All right, which couple would you want to see more of? Like, if you could pick a couple from any show, which one would you like a new reboot? I would love for again Martin and Gina to be rebooted. Me too. I know that would never happen, but I would love to see a reboot of that. But could you imagine them like how the show would be at fifty though? Not fun. Cause did you see the reunion on? I think it was on HBO Max. Excuse me. No. On the reunion, Martin looked clearly uncomfortable. Like, why am I here? Gina was like talking a whole lot. She's, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is that with her. Pam, fly, fine and fly as fuck. Per usual. As always. Um, I don't think they could have the same on-air chemistry that no, they had 20, not back 30 then. years ago. Yeah, because they're older. So, like, if we can get a TV show similar to Martin, that would be great. That would be great. I would want to see Issa, Ray, uh, and Lawrence. Back oh, like a whole show? A, a, yeah, a whole show just dedicated to them. Who the fuck is Carl and Harriet? Winslow, bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I they, need were good, they were a good family to have, like, uh, parenting lessons. I would like to see Urkel again. As a grown-ass 50-year-old nigga? No, just on the show, like that type of show. We, Of course, we're not going to be able to get the same people acting the same at the same age. But, but just, like, similar shows with the I, same... Like, not mm -hmm. the same show, but, like, to see where these characters, how they evolve. Like, is there any character that you would want to see how they evolved over time? We would need some 18-year-old characters then. What do you mean? Like, so it could be age relevant. That's what I'm saying. Issa and Lawrence would be good yeah. to see again. I could agree with that. I would like to see what Florida did after James died. You know, like, did she get a new nigga? Like, did she get a house? Bitch, did she get out that apartment right. in the sky? I would love to see that. <laughs> oh, me and Lance. Oh, we did. We just got to see uh, Lance get a new girlfriend. I would like to see where I could see watch more episodes of um, the best man. Uh, this was the final chapters, mm -hmm. but they could add more chapters. Maybe when my movie comes out, what's your movie going to be about? So just imagine like um, there's, I don't know, seven men, mm -hmm. right? And seven women okay. essentially. So take uh um, best man and what's the movie with the crazy ass white dudes who go hangover hangover okay mix that together okay right you got one character who just got out of prison that nigga like he's the comic relief okay he's still hanging his drawers up all type of shit in the house you got the the corporate thug type dude okay. you got the Erica Badu type nigga yes I love her Erica that Badu made type it. woman yeah the okay. Erica Badu type woman who like changes the Playboy whole little thing, whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like one of the wives, oh, you got a biracial couple in there too, okay. white guy. Yeah, like one of the wives get into the group chat mm -hmm. and see like, cause you know, I've seen some niggas group chats before. And it should be lit. There's a lot of pussy in there. A lot of shit that should not be happening. Well, that's if anybody's you group chat. Yeah, that's a lot of dick in my group chat. Uh, periodically, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a whole so lot. So wait, y'all be, be sharing like, I love a real, good cock shot. Real dicks, like our yes. like, internet dicks. I I love the invention of a fucking camera phone because it saves you from making mistakes. 
So sit in the dick. Let me see what I'm working with. <laughs> so if the dick the, the, the dick pic comes and it's not right, you oh, I don't think we should. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we should. <laughs> Nigga ghost. <laughs> Damn. Friend zone, and then you send it to I'm the group like chat. Niggas, men will smash you and then ghost you. At least I want to ghost you first. Before. Yeah. yeah, that's thoughtful. Thank you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> thoughtful. T h o t f u l. Okay, so back to your group chat. So that's pretty much the yeah. Premise that's of the it. gist of it. Yeah. So they find something in the group chat that is like unsavory and. And this is my, uh, what is it called? A poor man's uh, copyright, poor man's trademark. This is what I'm doing right now. So if I see my shit come out on film somewhere, I'm suing who the fuck ever. You gonna do it, friend. Don't worry about Thank it. You. Ain't nobody coming for your shit. You gonna do it. <laughs> Group chat coming in 2024. <laughs> <laughs> he talking about he gonna shoot your shit. <laughs> And I'm gonna shoot your shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, which uh, who who should have never been a couple? If you had to pick uh, mm. someone from these TV shows or movies, who do you feel like should have never been a couple? Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe Overton and Sinclair. They're alike, and I think they're too much alike. Now that could have been a toxic relationship. That might that have been was like love bombing. <laughs> they were love bombing each other a lot. My like, Ovi, all that shit. It was no. I feel like Stella and Winston should have never been a couple. Oh, Stella you know, was forty five. Winston was twenty two. Like she picked him up and moved him from Jamaica. I mixed up Overton and uh, what's the name with you know the other two who um, Sinclair. Sinclair and no, Overton. no, not Sinclair. What's the one with the with the dreads? Oh, oh you talking about Max and um, yeah, Maxine Shaw, Attorney yeah. Law, and and, and Kyle. Kyle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like them together. Nah, they had like a little that's who funny I was thinking dynamic. Of. See, I need shows next to this shit. Stella and, and Winston, they were they weren't compatible in my opinion. It was just like an older lady who was just needed some dick in her life. Can you ever relate to something like that? Yeah, that's why I feel like I really <laughs> had some shit like that. Going on. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get your groove back? Only for a minute. <laughs> I, I ain't heard from that nigga since Christmas. <laughs> Fuck him. <laughs> but yeah, next question, bitches. All right. Which couple had bad timing? Mm. I guess Issa and Lawrence. Uh, if I had to pick. Did they end up together? Yeah, they did. They did end up together. Okay. But, but he had a baby on the way. He had a baby. No, I, not on the way. The baby came. Okay. It was one episode she yeeted that baby. It was her imagination. <laughs> she beat that baby up and be like, I, I can relate to that shit. <laughs> Look, I remember the morning my ex called me. Well, I knew the baby was on the way, mm -hmm. right? And he sent me a picture of this baby and I slept peacefully after that. Because I'm like, huh. Like <laughs> what the the baby wasn't fucking cute, so I was Ooh, happy. <laughs> you go to hell, you go to hell for that. I'm not doing I that with you. I'm not doing that I, with you. First of all, I was hoping that she would have had a boy. Then he, then she could name him like the junior. I think is she doing something? But I hate that nigga name. Mm -hmm. So you could have done that. I wouldn't give a fuck and mm -hmm. still would have had his baby. But when I seen that baby, like she grew up, she's very beautiful now, right? Mm -hmm. But newborn. Like brand new. Why did he feel the need to send you a picture of his newborn baby with somebody else? I mean, I knew person. he was on the way to the hospital. We was like together. We were stole together. So oh, yeah. You stayed with him. Yes. Dumb bitch story. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed, bitch. Okay. You know why I stayed? Because uh we were in a long distance relationship and I just feel like shit gonna happen. If we was living five minutes apart, that's different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I can't... Um, I knew that. I knew some shit like that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't think he understood the significance of him having a baby until the baby came, though. Yeah. Because that's when the real problem started. We was good while the girl was pregnant. But once that fucking baby touched down, bitch, it was problems. Yeah. But yeah, I love because the fact you that she was you that cute. While she was pregnant, but you No, I weren't. knew I wasn't good. Okay. I knew I wasn't good. And I was really, like, waiting for... 
when that baby comes and he understands the significance of having your first child and wanting to be there and shit like that, how you gonna what's what what's the logistics of that gonna look like? Mm-hmm. And it didn't work. Obviously. No, yeah. it did not, bitch. So, not to be in your business, but maybe girl, be in my business. Maybe I'm a little bit. What was the conversation that was like, hey, I got a baby on the way with somebody? Girl, else. it was it was a, a cold New Year's Eve 20, uh, what year was this? I think we were going into 2013, maybe, something mm-hmm. like that. New mm-hmm. Year's, the nigga room in New Year's nonetheless. Clearly. We was we were about to get dressed to go to his homeboy house. Um, they were having a New Year's Eve party. And this stupid ass was like, man, that girl said she pregnant. <laughs> That's how it happened. That girl. So you that knew girl, about the woman. I knew he had been with somebody else. Yes. Okay. So that girl, when he said that, I knew exactly who the fuck he was talking about. But that girl said she... And I just left the house and went to a Mexican restaurant and they didn't. Mind you, I didn't live in the state. We didn't. We weren't living in the same city. I, I flew, flew home for Christmas. So I was living in the Midwest at the time. Oh. So now you like got me here. Good Christmas. Nice Christmas. Good gifts. You gave me your gifts shit. already? And yes. Shit. Yeah, but this is New up. Year's fucking Eve. And you got a whole bitch pregnant. I would have never came down here. I had a nigga do me like that before. That shit is took me to, sickening. He took me to the game. We had good seats. He took me shopping. He took me to a nice dinner. And then while we was at the table, he was like, Yeah, I got twins on the way. Yo. No, 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 they wasn't on the way. It was nine months. Oh. That's disgusting. Yeah. Our fucking life could be a damn sitcom. The shit I've been through is a real... Look, my movie gonna start with a scene from some shit I really went through in mm-hmm. real life. Imagine you, y'all just had a, you know, a couple of dates or whatever, but this is the night y'all gonna fuck. This is the night you gonna give him the pussy. Mm-hmm. You high with it. Like, I wasn't smoking weed at the time. I'm getting high with this man, all this shit. We had sex. Great, great, great sex. All right, about 2, 3.30 in the morning. At the fucking window of the bedroom. You in there with another bitch and I'm outside pregnant. I heard that. Like, I'm high and sleep. And I heard that. Like, you got a baby on the way? This the same nigga? Another nigga. <laughs> and I stayed and was engaged to this nigga. <laughs> I be making poor choices. So wait, but... how many times you been engaged? One time. Oh, this the same nigga with old Shane. No, the other this another nigga who had the baby. Now this is another man. No, I'm Let me just stop saying, saying nigga. The engagement is you only been engaged one time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was just you know I was putting two and two together. And yeah. So that's how the movie gonna start. Okay. <laughs> that, that sounds good. I'm tuning into that shit. I want to be in it. I'm gonna be the bitch outside. Like I'm pregnant and he in there fucking Come you. Outside, ho. Yeah. When I ain't gonna fight you. <laughs> All right, so last question before we get out of here. What's your favorite scene from any show, any time of all time? <sighs> your favorite yeah. scene. It doesn't have to be like a couple story or... Um, I don't know. All right, I'm going to tell you mine. Thank you. That episode TV of watching. Martin where they go to that island and they fighting that oh, puppy. Oh, I this that recently. That puppy. She's like... Beating the shit out of that shit, that is the best shit ever. If you watch that shit to this day, it's still fucking hilarious. I've seen hilarious. it recently. It was Pam and Martin beat the, beating the beating animal that, up. like, the puppy up. <laughs> that ain't no damn puppies. <laughs> That's my most favorite scene of any show of all time. Do you have one? But I like the scene when Martin um, and Gina, they went to his reunion and her face was oh, her fucked face up. Was now, fucked that up. was my, one of my favorite episodes, period. That was a good one. That was a good episode, too. Yes. Do you have any good emotional episode that like, damn, this made me cry. I was in my feelings. Outside of the Will Smith uh, with my daddy. Now, had- okay, back to loving basketball. Now, when he when he beat that bitch and she started crying, you know, when beat, he her beat her on the basketball oh, court. He won. When he beat her in the game. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, that's a different movie. When you see no domestic violence. See what the love- to do with it. <laughs> oh, we left them out. Yes. They were definitely the most toxic. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Ike Turner and Tina Turner, they definitely get... I did George and Wheezy bad saying that they were the most toxic. Yes. It was definitely Ike and Tina that was the most to- toxic. And shit, Jackson Fives, their parents, they wasn't beating each other but up, no, but they, they, they was beating, beating them the kids. Good, kids ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best parent. That ain't funny. Sorry. Listen, listen, yeah, that's not funny, right? But I mean, kind of. 
But uh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck them kids. The kids turned out to be very successful. Are they? Yeah, they successful, but they are they like sound mind individuals. I don't know. I can't speak to that, but they definitely did well. We all speak in their name, right? I would have took a couple. If I could have been like Michael Jackson, my mama could have beat the shit out of me every day. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. No. I mean, to have a career, successful career like Michael Jackson and be like, Michael Jackson would get on stage and stand there for 10 minutes and not move and the crowd would just be like, ah. And he ain't even moved. You see how they did Rihanna up there? They was talking shit because she wasn't moving. Right. It's not mm -hmm. a Michael Jackson moment. There, there'll never be another you know, artist you, like Do you Michael notice Jackson. they try to compare Michael Jackson and... Beyonce a lot. Yeah, because she has like that, the closest level of starting to Michael Jackson that has ever existed since him, right? Can you think of anybody that's more famous than Beyonce? I mean, maybe what, what's that Miley, Miley, uh, no, not Miley, T oh. Taylor Swift, Taylor? Taylor Swift ain't doing no fucking dancing either. No, she not dancing. I can't even name a Taylor Swift song, but I, I think Michael Jackson is still the greatest to ever do it. Right. I don't think Beyonce so if, can even if fuck with Michael. your mama was beating your ass, would you let your- No, like, nigga, what? what? <laughs> like, beat me. <laughs> I mean, I hit my mama back. <laughs> oh, that's a lie. You would not hit your mama back. <laughs> they gonna act like you hit them anyway. Might as well hit their ass. <laughs> Do we have a dumb bitch story outside of the one you told earlier? Oh, shut up, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I do have a dumb bitch story. It's not my own, okay? Mm -hmm. I always tell my dumb bitch shit just so y'all can live vicariously through me. Anyway, um, this comes from one of our Instagram listeners. And she says, hey, Tammy and AJ, I love y'all show. Not a podcast, but show, because that's what y'all give every Thursday is a motherfucking show. I hear that. Yeah. Um, so she says, so I need some advice on my semi dumb bitch story. Okay. I don't know if we can have a semi dumb bitch story, but okay. So my nigga is in jail. We have been talking since we were in middle school. We broke it off when I went to high school and got back together by senior year of high school. He's a hood nigga and he has been in and out of jail since 2018. On his streak of being out, he went back in 2020 and he's about to come home in February. He might be home right now. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. All right. So while he was in jail, I was so faithful to this nigga. Couldn't breathe in my direction without getting turned down. Oh, she, excuse me. She said, while he was in jail, I was so faithful. A nigga couldn't breathe in my direction without getting turned down. While he uh, was doing his first year in jail, he wanted to get all of his dirt off his chest. And, and I found out about all his holes. He was talking to while I was in college and all these holes, um, bank accounts. He was funding while I was in college, making ramen. <laughs> and me playing the strong black woman role, I was being too damn understanding. But eventually that shit sat with me and I was like, fuck no, I'm too cute for this. And I started my first whole phase ever. Okay. Uh, by the way, I'm 23. I forgot to mention that. So she's a young girl. Mm -hmm. I like young women. Mm -hmm. um, so long story short, I told him about my whole phase right before the year ended. Bitch, you don't never, ever admit to any whole shit right. to these niggas. They will never. That was they a mistake. They're not as forgiving. And they don't give as much grace as women give men. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. um, that's she was trying to make him mad. Right. Maybe. maybe. I don't know. Maybe because he's being honest, she wanted to be honest with him. I don't know. But bitch, never you don't, do don't that. ever be Never, honest ever, with ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like this my nigga this who I really want and I was getting too cold hearted and he was this is all mixed up um, he's done a lot of making up and really changed a lot in his old a lot of his old ways and as far excuse me what the fuck uh, he has done a lot of making up and really changed a lot of his old ways as far as he treats me so he's getting ready to come home and I wanted to wanted a clean slate. But my favorite hoe is also peeping. <laughs> she says she got a favorite hoe on the streets, basically. Oh, okay. Um, always peeping in my DMs and I'm wondering, should I um just do this last scratch with him or this last itch and scratch, whatever she's saying. Um, or just wait for my man to come home. This is what she's asking. So I was like, your favorite hoe, and did he ever fund your account? Right. But all right, what's your advice to her? Should she scratch that itch before? 
She, uh, her man come home? I never suggest anybody to wait for anybody to, to come out of prison. First of all, she should have been moved on. Mm-hmm. Like... I it don't depends. suggest any young young women, young girls. It depends on how much time it he is. He going to come, okay, the nigga who had the baby, he had just came home from prison. Mm-hmm. Was outside for one year and had someone pregnant. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't wait on him. I just happened to be single when he came home. Mm-hmm. But I'm not just going to just be waiting for, I don't suggest any young woman to wait, unless that's your husband. Yeah, because oh, the nigga ain't going to wait on you. You go to jail, he going to fuck exactly. somebody else to cope with you going your to jail. He going to fuck mama if she's willing. No, don't <laughs> yes. do that. Don't go that far. Yes. Ain't nobody <laughs> niggas looking like, I mean, what your mama look like? No, I mean. If your mama fuck around look like you, she, she get fucked. She of you. <laughs> <laughs> I missed you so much. <laughs> fuck your mama. Yeah, like I believe, no, hell no. Don't wait for no man to come home from prison. And why are you fucking with somebody who's in and out of jail anyway? He's not a good criminal. Yeah. You know, get you a blue collar. Um, excuse me, get you a white collar bay. Or, like somebody or who's into mortgage fraud and shit like that. Maybe not any criminal. Like that's <laughs> a good idea too. You know, stop fucking with criminals. But okay, like maybe he's reformed and maybe he's coming back a different man who wants to do the right thing by her, and that's fair. So uh, I would say go ahead and scratch that itch and keep it to yourself. And then just both of y'all start on the clean I think slate. men coming home from prison, they come home with a lot of resentment. Let you miss a letter, a visit. Oh, they do. They come have home a, lot with a lot of resentment of towards like the people on the outside until they're out here for a little while and they not responding to their homies in prison to see like nobody got time for that shit for real. Like you have life going on out here. Right. Your life stopped when you went to prison. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard. Like that's why it's usually mamas that keep up with them niggas. Like, no, for real. Like when people go to jail, they life really stop. Like this guy wrote me a letter. <laughs> All right, I had already graduated college. It had been like, I had been out of college probably like five years at this point. And I got a letter from him. Well, it went to my mother's house. So she's like, you got some prison mail here. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So uh, it said, when he's about to come home and he's gonna play basketball for Benedict. What? And I'm gonna be his girlfriend. And we're going to be living in the dorm. So he was still living. And I was like, the fuck you talking about? I've been working for five years. I've been out of college five years. And he was still caught up in that time frame. And mm-hmm. I, we hadn't even spoken. So people really be trapped in yes. time. So that means you're in jail with him if you don't move on with your life. Mm-hmm. Like you've been outside, been in prison. Niggas want you to be loyal like that. Yeah, them. and there's a lot of women in prison who in prison because of men, and they have nobody. Yeah. So don't wait on these niggas. Move on with your life. And, you know, maybe change yourself so you can attract a different type of man. That part. That's my suggestion. That hurt your feelings? A blue collar. Oh. <laughs> a blue collar. Because when we go through things with men, like, you have to look internal. It's not always the men. Like, what I about agree. me attracted this situation? What about me attracted this person? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what you got to work on. But just because <laughs> someone goes to jail doesn't necessarily mean that they're No, a absolutely bad not. I like, like I said, like I like smart people who can fuck with the system. system. Yeah, yeah, and I know that the system is still set up for black people to fail. So even if we find those little gray area, little loophole shit and get in trouble, like I'm not like those type of people. But if you go to jail for a bunch of stupid shit, robbing people, breaking in, that type hearing. of stuff, now I'll be moving them packs, okay? Like, <laughs> I might be have a little bit more. No, I'm done with all that shit. I'm too old for all of that shit now. Just give me a corporate guy who got come home every day at five. You want to? You get a corporate man? Yeah, that's where I'm at with it right now. I don't uh, entrepreneur. I date regular men. Okay. Yeah, I I haven't for a long time. Now I'm ready for my regular guy nine to five. Come home. It don't have to be nine to five. No, not nine to five. But I mean, just like routine as a routine. Right. I don't want a nigga like, what you doing? I don't even, I don't oh, really I'm like making routine. a play. If I meet another nigga making a play, <laughs> I want more, no more niggas <laughs> making plays, okay? <laughs> a middle finger to your old life, friend. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, y'all. So listen, if you enjoyed this episode, please tune in every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever the fuck you get your podcast at. This is your co-host, AJ Holiday 2.0. What's up, Tam? And I'm official Tam Bam. Y'all follow me on Instagram. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for tuning in. Y'all follow us and watch us every week. We're going to be filming 
almost every week, I promise. We're going to come to 85 South Studio if we can. You trying to do that? Me trying. I'm going right. to try real hard. All right. So we love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. <laughs> Remember, speak now. And never hold your peace. Deuces.